I don't know, guys. I don't know. There's something going on here. And are they going to actually admit there's a problem this time, or is this just topography? We're going to talk about another event from the PWBA or USBC, where another pair of lanes got completely screwed up. Waiting to hear what the excuse is this time. I don't know. We'll talk about it here in a minute. Stay tuned. So it was very disappointing the first time this happened that they didn't own up to the problem. Um, so it's very evident at this point that there's a malfunction or something happening in the machine. Uh, luckily, as far as we know, this time it's just one lane. It's only lane 31. But it's pretty apparent that some kind of malfunction is happening. And um, I think their best bet is to uh, ditch the machine they're using or both of the machines, because I'm sure they use multiple machines, and bring in a couple of new ones for the rest of the season. Otherwise, this is going to keep happening. Because I'm sure after that first debacle, they ran testing and everything on the machine because you know they know something's wrong. They just didn't want to admit it. They obviously couldn't hold themselves accountable for whatever reason. I have no idea. I think they look worse by you know, trying to play it off as if everything was cool. And it was just topography, you know, just the lanes. And it, you know, it just goes to show that, you know, the lack of transparency is a big problem in our sport, you know, specifically at the USBC level. Um, I've always been a USBC supporter because I do believe that we've got to have a governing body, of course. Um, but now we're to the point where, you know, it's possible that Bolero or, you know, the PBA could basically take over and do their own certification and all this type of stuff, which I guess I would be I would be good with. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Bolero. A lot of people have an issue with them. But uh, at the end of the day, I think things would change a little bit if they had their hand in certifi certifying bowling itself. So I think that's a long ways away. I don't think they're going to be you know fully up to doing the entire country plus, you know, whatever else that has to be done overseas and whatnot. But uh, I do think that that would be a step in the right direction. I know they're still they are doing their own league certification and all that stuff for uh, for Bolero center, centers, and they're going to open it up eventually to outside Bolero centers, which would be good. I know they're doing their own bowling ball certification, their own or at least their own uh, testing and all that stuff now. But uh, I just I don't know. Watch this. This is lane thirty one. I don't think it's as bad as last time. But they're still throwing plastic because the lane just hooks that much more than the other lane. So check this out. Tell me what you think. It hit, yeah, no, it hit like a ball. I had to, uh, She's all the way left. Plug a lot of ball balls. <laughs> yeah, we died. Not doing oh, anything to the ball. Straight at. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, I, I, uh... Yeah, I Yep, Danielle with plastic. Anyone who just watched game four, Juliana Franco shot 57, I believe. Oh, jeez. I've seen a few seven sets on that lane. So another four nine. Those are plastic balls, folks. Those last few girls. They were throwing plastic. Danielle threw plastic, threw it straighter, kept her, kept it in front of her. That girl that I'm pretty sure that was reactive, that took three off the left. And then her spare ball was plastic that still hooked in the in the front part of the line and went Brooklyn to make the spare. And then you saw the left-hander using an ice storm, just like what you saw Gigi Mason using that week before in the Queens, throwing an ice storm in the middle of the lane, hooking the lane. Um, so, and that's the only lane that was doing it, as far as I could tell. But but Man, there's something's got to give here. Like you've got to, and I know you can sit there and you can say, well, they're professionals; they should be able to adjust. But that is not the point. Like the the the, if the lane was just a little bit different, sure. Like, but we're talking about we're light years. Like these these two lanes, like that lane compared to the rest of the house, is just 
so dramatically different. It's not a topography thing because um, anybody that's bold in that center knows there's no lane that is that much different. Like we go there for the Memorial Day tournament all the time. They just had the Memorial Day tournament there this weekend. There were no issues. Uh, I know of people that bowled on that pair. The person that took that video you just saw, his son bowled on that pair. And he had a video up there also of him bowling on that pair. And it didn't hook. It didn't do that. It wasn't even close. So, uh, yeah, of course, the pattern's different. But that's a 44-foot pattern they're bowling on with 26 mil. Not exactly a light volume pattern, you know? So plastic should not do that. There's no way. But I I'm telling you, if they would have gotten up and thrown plastic on the, the lane on the right, they would have missed the head pin to the right. That's how different those lanes are. And it's just, it's so dramatic. It's an unfair playing field for those who have to hit that pair compared to anybody else that happens to miss that pair. If you miss that pair during that block, you are at a big advantage. If you hit that pair during that block, you're at a big disadvantage. I don't care how well you adjust unless you get lucky. If for some reason you get lucky and make the right move, great. But like listening to the announcers and stuff, they're like, oh, look at these guys, you know, these girls, you know, they're starting out spare. None of them have an open frame through four frames. It was game like three or four that they were talking about or three game two or three that they were talking about that after they already noticed there was a problem. So they knew going into that pair that they had to move way left. Um, so, yeah, that's where ball reps come into play. That's great and everything. But still going to a pair that is that different is just mind blowing. Like that's just that's just not right. Bowlers can only adjust so much. You know, you have to give up how many frames to be able to adjust to what you have out there. Like that's. I mean, I, I can't stress enough how unfair that truly is. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, head over to BowlerX.com. Actually, I got uh, their, they have my books over at BowlerX.com now that I'm shipping to you personally. Uh, maybe in an email, send them. I'll autograph it for you. Not that my autograph is, means anything, but some people might want it. Who knows? I don't know. But if you do, I can sign it for you. I'll write you a little note, whatever, uh, for the ones that I ship out. I'm shipping all the ones out from anything ordered from bowlerx.com. If you order for Amazon, I'm not shipping those, so I can't do anything with those. But the ones from bowlerx.com I am shipping, those will ship the uh, the second week of June because I'm getting them on the 7th or something. I think they get delivered to me as far as the release book goes. Um, so if you want one, head over to bowlerx.com and we'll get you hooked up. But this, uh, this USB-C thing, it's crazy. I'm going to let you watch that one more time so you can see it and then I'm gonna roll out of here. Yeah, no, it hit like a ladder ball. Had to uh, She's all the way left. Bug a lot of ball balls. <laughs> yeah, we died. Not doing anything to the ball. Straight it. Oh my goodness! Wow. Yeah, I, I, uh... Yeah, I heard yep, Danielle with plastic. That's just amazing. Like, that's just, I don't even know what to call it. Like, a left-hander <laughs> in just a couple of games in throwing plastic and their balls hooking in the front and going through the face. Like, that's just, I don't know. Y'all can sit there and try to say that they should adjust all you want, but that's just, that's an unfair playing field. If you don't have to hit those pairs, then it's just not fair. So, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm getting out of here. Um, buy your books, all that good stuff. I got a clinic coming up also. There's going to be an in-person clinic that will happen at Waterford Lanes. I think it's going to be on the 17th, the day before Father's Day. So that Saturday before Father's Day, I'm going to do a couple hour clinic there where we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to do the mental game, the release and physical game. So pretty much going through everything you can possibly imagine in a more advanced type class. Beginners would benefit from it too. So if you're more of a beginner, that's great. If you're an advanced bowler, that's even better. Um, and we'll be able to learn from it. So I'm out of here. We'll see you guys next time.